find out what it is in life that you don't do well. And then don't do that thing. Stay thirsty, my friends. Go yourself. Is that clear? I hope it is. Hey, Bob, if you're in the audience. This week, the critical drinker, Nerd Roddick, and all of us YouTubers in the fellowship have gotten a powerful new ally that understands what we've been saying for years now. Activist investor Nelson Peltz absolutely manhandled Disney's Bob Iger in a scathing article from Variety. But what exactly did he do that got everyone's panties up in a bunch? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the dumpster fire that is Disney. The whole purpose of starting my channel was that I wanted to get back the movies that I loved. I'm a huge fan of movies and pop culture, and definitely consider myself a nerd when it comes to that. Damn proud of it, too. But over the last decade, I began to notice some trends in pop culture. For one, there had been literally no good comedies after The Hangover, and Disney's Star Wars sequel trilogy leaves something to be desired. A lot of other people notice this trend of Hollywood getting woke, but everything seemed to be humming along on the Marvel side of things until cracks began to show during Phase 3 with the first Captain Marvel movie. Then came Phase 4, and it was one disaster after the next, and investors started to take notice at the large drop in Disney's stock price and were very understandably pissed. Enter Nelson Peltz. Nelson Peltz is an activist investor similar to the dude Bill Ackman. These are rich people who try to impose their will on companies. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. But in the case of Disney, Nelson Peltz legitimately wants to change the company for the better, similar to the way Elon Musk drastically improved Twitter and is a champion for free speech. Well, this week, a scathing article came out of Variety where Nelson Peltz goes absolutely ballistic on Disney's awful business strategy of pandering to the wokesters and the alphabet mafia. In the article, he asks, Why do I have to have a Marvel movie that's all women? Why do I need an all-black cast? A legitimate question. Many people have brought up the airline pilot or surgeon example. Do you want the most ethnically diverse pilot or surgeon to be in charge of your life? Or do you want the most skilled pilot or surgeon? And these questions were asked before at Disney. The article continues as Marvel chairman Perlmutter famously fought Marvel Studios chief Kevin Feige over making Black Panther and Captain Marvel on the belief that the movies with black or women lead characters would not be commercially successful until Iger intervened to overrule Perlmutter. So basically, the woke activists at the company overruled any business strategy that aimed for the best result in favor of the most diverse and progressive result. We all know how that turned out for Disney and its stock price. The proof is in the pudding. The article continues on to reveal the true culprit of this terrible business strategy. In his 2019 memoir, The Ride of a Lifetime, Bob Iger described the tensions that had built up between Feige and the New York office, i.e. Perlmutter. We had a chance to make a great movie and to showcase an underrepresented segment of America, and those goals were not mutually exclusive, Iger wrote. I called Ike and told him to tell his team to stop putting up roadblocks and ordered that we put both Black Panther and Captain Marvel into production. So now we know that Perlmutter and others in the company did try to put up a fight against the woke activists and lost out. But by winning, the woke activists ended up costing Disney billions of dollars. And now we're gearing up for another major fight at Disney's annual meeting and proxy vote. Nelson Peltz is vying for two board seats so that he can institute some changes at the company. His victory is far from assured though. So he employed the help of Elon Musk and others to attack the dragon from all sides. But this is just one 81-year-old dude. Even if Peltz is able to rally enough shareholders to his side, he'll still have to contend with the likes of BlackRock, who is a majority shareholder in the company. And we all know what Larry Fink is really after. That sweet, sweet ESG money uh, that doesn't really exist. Bob Iger seems to be the mainstream media's darling, however. And the access media is coming down hard on Nelson Peltz and his efforts to detoxify Disney. But what he is saying is technically true. Do you really need to have an all-black or all-female cast in a movie? 
or should you have the best cast and characters? And if they're diverse, then even better. The problem with the progressive movement and its focus on identity politics is that it's actually promoting a racist ideology. You absolutely should not hire someone based on the color of their skin or their gender. You should hire actors that are the right fit for the role, actors that have the requisite skills to be able to do a good job. Otherwise, you're just setting them up for failure. Case in point. When Disney was trying to get a director for the Captain Marvel sequel, Kevin Feige and the progressives pushed very hard to have a woman of color for the job. Before the Marvels, director Nia DaCosta only had three small directing credits for small films. DaCosta is younger than me, and I definitely don't want to engage in age discrimination, but hiring someone so young and so inexperienced for such a large production was not the best business strategy. The Marvels cost $300 million to produce, so wouldn't you want to have someone experienced to be able to shepherd the project along? Why would you risk over a quarter of a billion dollars on someone so inexperienced simply for the ESG brownie point? Well, we all know how the Marvels did. And afterwards, Kevin Feige and Disney threw Nia DaCosta under the bus and blamed her. So the fact that they hired her based on her race and gender actually set her up to fail. Now, if they hired someone who was more experienced and maybe happened to be ethnically diverse, then great, that's the cherry on top. But they ended up hiring based on race and gender and ended up paying the price. Because you see, it never ever pays to be racist or to do racist stuff like hiring based on race and gender. You're going to lose every time. So Nelson Peltz does make a very important point that the progressive left just seems to not comprehend. But what do you guys think about all this? Do you think Nelson Peltz has a good chance to get the two board seats to clean up Disney? Please do let me know down below in the comments. And as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.